Oh, I just knocked a ruler off my desk. How is everyone tonight? I am your ever beloved Sega Sonic Radio host, GX, aka the Spin Dash, aka Chris, aka whatever you want to call me. I keep hitting things on my desk. I'm going to move things away from my desk because we're getting active tonight. No, we're not. No, we're not. I'm very tired. It's Friday. It's been a very long week, and I. But it's been a very long week for many people, including several, uh, several Olympiads, because it is nearly closing time for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. In in 2021, because you know. You know, that whole thing happened, what, where, what, where the virus made everyone sick and they could not make an Olympics happen. And they probably shouldn't have made an Olympics happen, but, you know, they did. And politics and, you know, health and safety, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? An Olympics happened. People made athletics at an audience sometimes and it's it you know what this okay this is just an excuse to play a lot <laughs> a lot of mario and sonic at the olympic games music and i it's not that i should ever need an excuse to play that i i really like the music in this series but you know what it's it's contextual it it it, it makes sense in the moment and we're going to go through with it i'll be honest I didn't watch any of the Olympics this year. <laughs> I didn't. It's it's not sports in most uh, televised sports in most instances just aren't my thing and it's not that there's anything innately wrong with them or that or me. It's just that it, you know what if I'm going to do if I'm going to see a competition of some sort it's the kind of thing that I would like to be active in. It's why I don't I don't even play esports. Or watch esports or anything like that. Like for me, at most, I might enjoy a performance sport of watching someone speed run something. Not for competition, but for the sake of speed running in itself. But hey, we've got several Mario and Sonic games for you tonight. Uh, just to set a tone for this, these are all only the summer game games. And all of the songs are from those games. So, as a reminder, there is the original, uh, the Beijing games in 20... 2008, if I remember correct. Uh, then we have the London games in 2012. Uh, we have the Rio games in 2016, and we have the uh, Tokyo games in 2020. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Knuckles in chat. Uh, these are only going to be the um, the console versions, and it's it's no hate on the DS versions. It's just this this came together very quickly, and I did not have time to prep tracks for the. Um, for the DS versions, or or the three DS versions, or whichever versions, no hate on them. I know a lot of people like some of the DS versions and three DS versions of those games. It's just not ready for them yet. They're 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 not as well documented as the console ones, and thus they are harder to manage. <laughs> so we're we're gonna kick things off as you might kick off an Olympics game, we're going to start off with Road to Rio from uh, Sonic and Mario at the Rio 2020, 2016 Olympic Games. And, because Olympics are all about a rivalry, we are going to listen to the rival theme of King Boo from uh, London 2012. I shall see you guys on the other side.
Hey, and welcome back. So, uh, if you're wondering what the King Boo soundtrack was in relation to the rest of this, uh, part of several of the Olympics games uh, involved special rival events where you could play against characters who normally would not be able, or would not be generally playable in the game. Sort of like, um, boss events or just special events uh king boo boo was available in london 2012 in the dream uh the mm, what was it called the dream sprint which if you don't recall because i i i don't think um london 2012 was one of the better known versions uh it was kind of like a weird pinball monkey ball type uh racing mode where <clears throat> the the com the players would go into these giant balls and run around this big pinball like environment attempting to get to the bottom first and i don't, I don't know like um I'm, I'm trying to think of king boo in the olympics and the type of events that he would probably be best in and and part of that is me thinking of okay what is the max speed of a boo? Because they, like, if they're going through hurdles, they can literally just go through hurdles without knocking them down. I kind of wonder what the Olympic judge ruling would be on intangibility. Uh, but you're just kind of limited by your speed, I imagine, in, in your whatever version of Mario Undead State would that be. <laughs> Uh, it just, it's best not to, I should not be contemplating the logistics of the Olympics games, so. Uh, for those who have not, um, played a lot of the Olympics games, but are maybe mildly familiar with them, it began in <clears throat> about 2007-2008 with the Beijing Olympics, and this sort of agreement between Nintendo and Sega to produce this crossover game, I believe, following Smash Brothers. Uh, the Wii was rather infamous for being a console full of a lot of minigame collections, and minigame collections were kind of what was bizarrely popular on that, uh, led by Wii Sports and brought up by other minigame collections like Wii Play, um... Uh, there, there, there were too many. Raving Rabbids was a launch game. It was also a mini game collection. Uh, there was like a fairground game that I cannot recall, but I remember that being an unreasonably popular entry. And uh, Sega developed the games for the Mario and Sonic Olympic series, and it it sort of was meant to be this sort halfway point between where what you could do with Mario characters and what you could do with Sonic characters and the idea that the Olympics in spirit is this place of different different worlds coming together, different countries, different nations, different uh peoples coming together for this singular event of competition and camaraderie. And uh thus spawned a series which sold very 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 well for years and years and years um i i think it wasn't until the wii u that the sales really started to dip and i haven't seen tokyo 2020 but i am led to believe it did all right i'm led to believe it did all right uh i like the, i like the olympic games i can sort of if you sort of point, have me point to which ones I like and which ones I don't, I would say I am a bigger fan of some of the winter ones, especially the first... Well, let's be real. There's really only, I think, two Winter Olympics, and I really like the first Winter Olympics. I'm not a huge fan of Sochi. I feel like Sochi was a bit of a... was a bit of a write-off year for that, but... um the closer they are to being games, and the farther they are from being a modern take on uh, 
Konami's track and field series, uh, the more I tend to like it. I, I'm not a big fan of mash the buttons or wave the remote, but I do enjoy aim here, get timing right, do it well, keep up a pace, steer things, play a sport, do a skateboarding, ride this horse. That's, that's kind of where I stand with it. And you know what? They t they tend to look very good, and they tend to have pretty darn good soundtracks, as we're about to hear. I've got three more... Three? I've got two uh, songs coming up. Uh, each of these... We're going to we're gonna start off with some track and field, despite, despite what I just said about track and field. Uh, from the original game, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games in Beijing, uh, we've got... The theme of 110 meters and 400 meter hurdles. And after that, we've, we're going back to Rio for the 100 meter hurdles. See you guys on the other side. <laughs>
Uh oh, didn't quite get there. Didn't quite get there quick enough. So hey, we are back, and welcome back to this all Olympic episode, all Summer Olympic episode of Sega Sonic Radio. We had just finished up some track and field events, and soon we are going to get into some aquatic events. So uh, I remember when the first game came out, it was roughly about the time that I was wrapping up uh, college. And it, it was a pretty big event when that first game came out. Sonic had already been in Smash Brothers, so that part was always... Um, that, that part was a known quantity. But uh, there was a lot of rumors and speculation leading up to the actual announcement of the Mario and Sonic games. The idea that uh, Mario, and, Mario and Sonic's prospective companies, Nintendo and Sega, were working on some sort of game to bring them together. And, of course, a lot of people assumed, well, it's, it's going to be a platformer. They're going to try to find some way to put a uh, platformer in this. And... It's kind of funny to think about the uh, the way that people assume that in a world where we have a Mario plus Rabbids game and and another one on the way in which the end result was a strategy game. Nintendo seems to be pretty okay saying, hey, you know what? We're happy to do uh, crossover stuff if we trust you as a company, as a business partner, I should say. And uh, But you know what? What if, what if what if you make some sort of weird spin-off though? And by God, did Sega make some weird spin-offs here with these uh, games? Very amusing spin-offs. Uh, games in which the um, internal storytelling of them don't quite make a lot of sense or are just overtly ignored, but um, amusing nonetheless. Uh, so we're we're going to we'll go ahead and get into two songs from aquatic events uh first off we've got the four by 100 meters freestyle from the original mario and sonic in the olympic games then we'll be heading back to london 2012 for canoeing i'll see you guys on the other side <laughs>
Hey all, and we are back. Not quite at the halfway point yet, but 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 dangerously close. Dangerously. So last we left off, uh, I had discussed some Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games originally released in 2008. Uh, the follow-up in terms of summer games, and we're just going to stick with summer since that's the playlist tonight, uh, was the um, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games. It also came out on Wii, and uh, this was the one where, in terms of summer games, they actually started to introduce some... Um, much more recognizable sports. So it still had a lot of the athletic games from the previous title, things like uh, track and field stuff, the 100 meter, the hurdles, relay races, hammer throw, discus, etc., etc., etc. It had a few more gymnastics events, uh, but it was the game where they started to s spread out just a little bit more, um, much more so than the first game, which was very... Shake the Wii Remote to make a thing happen. This one had a, a couple more interesting events. Uh, it had badminton. It had uh, football. Uh, fencing. And most significantly, <laughs> much, much to my eternal uh, joy and humor, <laughs> it had equestrian events. And... Effectively, what that meant was any of the significant Mario and Sonic characters that were in the game, you got to watch them ride like non-anthropomorphic, slightly anime-faced horses <laughs> through basically equestrian tracks. And it's very surreal watching that happen. Uh... I, I see Alex in the chat is bringing up Shadow <laughs> Shadow on a horse, but, like, Shadow's the least of it. Like, do you want to watch, like, do you want to see Wario ride a horse? Like, Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic riding a horse. Oh, it was very strange and very odd, and, and it wasn't quite, it, it didn't quite hit the novelty of the first game, but, London did have the London one did have some charms. Um, I, I I think the tough part is the Olympics. The first Winter Olympics game uh, improved the formula so much that uh, London felt like a bit of a regression, uh, especially the DS version of the first Winter Olympics, which had a full story mode, uh, not quite RPG, but wander around an overworld, do a bunch of events, complete some stuff. It was fun. I liked it. Uh, we are going to hit up some more songs before we uh, come back to our navel-gazing Olympic memories. We've got three... Okay, we've got two gymnastic events and one event that I don't quite know how to classify, but is but has gymnastic elements to it, I guess? <laughs> We're get, we have two tracks from London 2012, and they are Trampoline, number one, and The Uneven Bars. Following that, we're heading to Tokyo 2020 for Tower Climb. I'll see you guys on the other side.
Hey, and welcome back to yourself and I. And we have hit the halfway point of the show, and that means... Let's check out the news from the week. Not, not, not a terrible amount of news. Uh, I'd say the biggest highlight of the week is, uh, hey, a, a new... A new uh, Picross game came out, specifically Picross S Genesis and Master System Edition, or uh, or Genesis and or uh, Mega Drive and Master System Edition, depending on region. Yeah, uh, I I'm looking forward to this game. It's probably going to be uh, one of my uh, my my big games for next month. Just uh, just hammering out uh, Picross puzzles. I love Picross. I'm, I'm more of a 3D man, but I, I still love me some 2D Picross. I'm not above it. Make some, make some Streets of Rage characters. Some outrun out of these, out of these little pixels. Uh, I, I would be remiss or scolded uh, if I didn't mention that, hey, if you are a fan of the upcoming Sonic Colors Ultimate, uh, then you would you would be remiss not to go over to SonicStadium.org and check out the official Sonic Stadium tw uh, preview and interviews uh, regarding the upcoming game. Uh, Dreadnoughts got to sit down, play a little bit of it. Uh, got to sit down with some uh, people involved with the game and he's got impressions and he's got questions we also got a uh, trailer for sage 2021 and i will say sage stuff looks real good this year it looks real good there's a lot of original projects oh i'm really looking forward to sage this year i'm, I'm curious how much of it i can actually cover but yeah sage looks good this year um if you have, unless you've gotten it through a smaller online retailer, hey, if you are interested in the Jax Pacific uh, Eggman robot toy, it looks like they are hitting stores right now over at Target. Uh, you can get that for about 40 bucks US and comes with the Eggman robot, the uh, final boss of Sonic 2. He has battle damage. If you hit him enough times, his arms and legs fall off. He just falls, he just falls apart like an incredible crash dummy. It's it's, it's amusing. Uh, it also comes with Sonic and a ball and a catapult for to shoot him. I can tell you, it very rarely works in the way that that game advertised because of it, that the toy seems to uh, imply, except for like uh, except for like maybe Sonic Mania. It's a little bit kinder in Sonic Mania. Uh, we got we got a much more legitimate confirmation of Sonic in Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania coming out in, oh, I believe October, if I remember correctly. And not only are we getting Sonic and and presumably Tails, which I don't think has been officially announced yet, but Sonic has. But we are also getting Beat from Jet Set Radio and. Uh, to, to each, uh, Sonic will be collecting rings, Beat will be collecting paint cans. Uh, it, it seems like it's going to be weird and amusing and strange, and I enjoy it. Uh, there's, there's been a bit of a magazine scan going around on the internet as of late. Uh, in this particular magazine scan, uh, found, found on archive.org, uh, features some Sonic the Hedgehog beta, uh, screenshots. How, how unusual is this? Well, it includes an enemy that, uh, Yuji Naka himself was not even quite aware of, uh, putting that enemy in the game uh it's strange it's it, this enemy is like a giant mouthed blue creature it, it's not very what you might consider badnik like we'll say which which makes sense at the time 
especially if you've seen some of the very early Sonic sketches when they were trying to figure out, like, what what is the style of this? Is it just more abstracted? Do we have a universe here? What's up with it? So it's kind of neat. It, it, it lo- it's just a big it's just a big blue blob with a giant toothy mouth. Uh, it's amusing. I think it's a good time to head back to some music. And according to my playlist, I picked a duo, both of them from uh, Rio 2016, and they have a bit of a musical theme in common between the two. Uh, again, number one, tonight an excuse to play songs from games that I like the soundtracks of. But more specifically, it's a really good um, it's a really good excuse to play some music from things that are Mario and Mario adjacent, as we are about to hear in uh, DK Island Swing, which was a song that was used in the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. And following thematically on that, uh, one of the rival characters that you could play as in the game uh, was Styx. Uh, Styx from so- of Sonic Boom fame. Uh, this was about the time that Rio 2016 itself was released on the Wii U, and they were a bit willing to acknowledge that that branch exists before it was uh, unceremoniously severed. Uh, it- it's-, it's funny. Uh, Styx appeared in several spin-off things. Uh, she was, a uh, aside from being a, a, a unimportant character in the Wii U game and a slightly more important character in the, uh, DS games, uh, she went on to be a big major player in the cartoon series. Um, she was part of the Olympics game, and if you remember the Shinobi 7, uh, Kickstarter tabletop game, she was one of the uh, ex- one of the um, expansion goals that you would be able to play as her as well. She also played a surprisingly important role in the Worlds Unite crossover, in which um, Sonic Boom and Sonic Standard and Mega Man and Mega Man X and a thousand other franchises. All sort of came together, and uh, she she t- she tamed the Gormagala. It was amusing. It's one of my favorite moments of that. So, let's go ahead and listen to DK Island Swing, and then uh, Sticks theme. Almost almost one of the same songs, but you know, thematically similar. See you on the other side. <laughs>
Hey, and welcome back. Honestly, yeah, there's there. I I very well could have left that running for about three and a half more minutes. Uh, it, 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 it 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 looping twice. It's a long loop, but it's man, that is a good song. That's such a good song, and I mean, not only is Dick's theme great, I I'll be real. Donkey Kong Island Swing is probably the song I have just going on in my brain in any neutral time. That if I'm sitting somewhere and I need to do something and I feel like I am inclined to tap out a rhythm, it is almost certainly that that percussion line of bump 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 just just tapping that out from the original Donkey Kong Country. Oh, that was... That series has such great music. I love it so much. But this is not... This is not Nintendo Donkey Kong Radio. That... that I, I will... I will write up the pitch to, to Dreadnux for that very short, soon. But let's return to Sega Sonic Radio. Listen to Sonic music. Because it's for Sonic website. Ugh. So yeah, uh, when last we left off, <laughs> uh, tw London 2012 happened. Uh, it was the second one for Wii. It had it, it started to involve a little bit more sports. Um, Sochi came after. Uh, it was the first one for Wii U. Uh, it 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 just sort of came and went. Uh, I'm sure it sold fine relative to expectations of the Wii U, but it just it just didn't it it, it felt like it also ran. It didn't quite scratch the itch of what the uh, first Winter Games did. But um, following on that, then like expectations for me were personally pretty low coming through and. Then, then Sonic, then Mario and Sonic at Rio 2016 hit, and it was a huge surprise. Uh, it felt like they went all in in a way that they did not for Sochi. Um, it felt vibrant and colorful, and it had amazing character models, and the music was just big and energetic and it it felt like they were much more keenly playing to the um host venue rather than say, rather than just saying oh it's, it's an olympics games we're just go we're going to have it be much more like a sports game which i mean kind of what i like about the soundtracks in these is that um a lot of it sounds like stuff from mario sports titles and they sort of emulated that style for it. And once Rio hit, they moved a little bit farther away from that. They were much more willing to look at the host city and sort of figure out, okay, well, what what makes this what makes this region interesting? Like what kind of styles and sports can we take from this in order to make it? And uh Obviously, Japan would go would go all in on that, but Rio was a good starting point. Uh, it felt like they went even farther in games that were ga <laughs> games that are more traditionally games. Like again, they still had they still had some of the track and field stuff, but that was becoming less and less of a thing. Uh, there was the relay, there was the 100 meters, etc. Uh, but they had stuff like boxing, equestrian returns, uh, they had archery, uh, although archery was that. But most significantly, uh, the game was about three major events, um, and those major events were football, uh, of course, uh, more colloquially in the U.S., soccer, <laughs> rugby sevens, uh, and beach volleyball, and it it face it it kind of came down to well, these are the three primary events. These are the things that we're putting significant effort into. We have other things, 
BMX is a good example. Uh, but if we want people to continue like coming back, we have these things that these three events that have a bit more depth than the others do. And it's I it's a neat way to do it. Um I don't think it's entirely successful, but I think it's in some ways it's more successful when, than when they tried the event like big sports of big conventional sports events in previous games. And at the very least, like just the aesthetics sold it alone. And hey, it introduced a lot of people who may not have been involved with rugby to rugby. So I think um, if I remember correct, I thought uh, in rugby that Boom Boom was involved a lot or or some heavier character. I might be making this up. I don't recall, but uh, there were there were new characters in it. They started to bring back some of the Kooplings, and I don't think they were necessarily full-scale playable, but they were involved. Um, Rosalina was introduced. For some reason, Nabbit's in it. <laughs> uh, in terms of the Sonic side, uh, Sticks Returns, uh, Zavik's introduced... Zavik and Zaz, the two, uh, the two <laughs> Sonic Lost World characters... That they're like, no, wait, we've got to continue to have these characters in no matter what. No matter what. Whether people like them or not, we're going to make sure that they're in our games. Which, I mean, at the time, Sonic Lost World just came out. So if you need a, if you need a rival character, Zavik and Zaz, I mean, have a chance. <clears throat> we have got a few more songs for you. And... I don't have a good theme for these. I was originally just gonna say, "Oh, these are riding sports," but then one of them's one of them's table tennis, so that's not a riding sport. Uh, I I kind of I've kind of gone through the a lot of the classic songs, so most of these are going to be based on the more modern games. Uh, we're gonna start off with Rio 2016 and the equestrian event. Then we're gonna pop over to Tokyo 2020 for skateboarding. And finally, Rio 2016, again, for table tennis. I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey, people, um, 
So yeah, uh, right in the middle of that song, uh, XSplit just decided to crash on me. I uh, don't know why. I I can tell you the the whole um the, the whole setup that I use for this is usually pretty technically demanding, and uh, XSplit does not have a great time with it. So I don't know if I overloaded it or what, but. Hopefully we should be back, and I am just going to test to make I don't know sure. If I over yep, yep, I can hear myself. Uh, we're go we're going to continue with that music streak, and uh, you know, just sort of wrap it up. I'm going to say that Equestrian is done. We list we listened to enough of that song that it can be considered listened to. Uh, so yeah, we're j we're just going to continue back over with skateboarding and table tennis. So. Uh, I'll see you guys on the other side again. <laughs> Sorry about the technical issues.
Hey, and welcome back. So, aside from technical difficulties, uh, when last we left off, uh, Sonic and Mario went to the 2020, the 2016 Wii Games, and, uh, I had, I had very few, little but positive things to say about it. It's, it's a solid game. I enjoy it quite a lot. Uh, has a great style to it. Um, uh, we're, we skip ahead. Uh, oh, also, uh, it got a really solid arcade game. Um, if you've ever been able to... I know Dave and Busters uh, tend to have them. And I know this may not be the best time in life to go to a Dave and Busters. I know that I I regularly... We'll say, we'll say, we'll say when I w had business trips, uh, I would regularly visit one because you know it was something to do um but yeah uh it's it's very physical it had a it has like a big button and arm dealies you move with and an actual running pad that they expect you to run or manipulate and it's it's kind of neat and i like it uh but Nothing happened for several years after. Um, there was no 2018 uh, Mario and Sonic game. And the big reason for that is that for that Olympics year, Ubisoft actually had the license to make an Olympic game. And they opted to do so by, by effectively... Um, making steep their olympic game which which all in all i'm not a i'm not a huge uh like i'm not gonna sit here and say oh all mario and sonic games are the highlight of my game playing times but i i can at least say in terms of cultural impact they certainly made a lot they certainly were much more significant than steep ever was at any point in its life so i don't know i guess i guess if you're ubisoft you, you swung and you missed with that one try like getting the olympics license to make this and i don't know at the same time though what it did mean is uh when Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 came out, uh, it had been a while since there had been one of these. There was a bit more time for the uh, for the heart to grow fond for the style of game it was. Because even still, uh, even out of the Wii U period and far away from the Wii uh, era... This game is still a collection of mini games, and I, I think one of the benefits that this one had was for most of them, with Sochi being one of the big examples, most of them had some sort of portable version. Uh, this one did not. Uh, Tokyo 2020 obviously was on Switch. And thus was its own portable version. Uh, they took it as an opportunity to give it like this big, huge story mode uh, with a weird, crazy story. It, one that doesn't necessarily make visual sense, but is still really amusing nonetheless. Um, Mario, uh, Bowser, and Eggman got together to make this device which they were going to unleash on Mario and Sonic and in turn all got <laughs> all got caught up in it uh where Mario and Sonic and Bowser and Eggman were all sent backwards in time to the 1964 Tokyo games uh which number 1 ain't, ain't, ain't no video games in 1964 but number 2 a lot of one of the weird one of the big criticisms of it was the era of sprites that they opted to use for these were for Mario they went with the 8-bit sprites and for Sonic they went with 16-bit sprites and I know a lot of people were bothered by that. I thought it was funny. 
Uh, I especially think it's funny in that they attempted to make them animate in ways that they wouldn't, in ways that those characters do not have animations for. Um, generally speaking, though, I understand, like, hey, we, we went with the classic look that people most identify with, and for that, for Mario, it's, it's on the NES, and for Sonic, it's on the Genesis, and they, they weren't going to drag out, uh, Mass, they weren't going to dress drag out Game Gear Sonic to make that, and they weren't going to drag out Super Nintendo Mario to make that, just because that's those aren't the styles that people associate with those series, one way or another. Uh, even then, though, in terms of minigame collections, it's just it's just really solid. Like they lean a lot less on the button mashing aspects and they focus more on timing and direction and control. And I, it's something that I really appreciate. Uh, the, the driving philosophy on it was we want to bring in, of course, Sega and Nintendo being Japanese companies, we want to really bring in Japan in this one. And they did so. Uh, specifically for this Olympics, they had karate, uh, karate uh, skateboarding, sports climbing, and surfing in this one, which were all significant. Not all of them were new Olympic events, but like I believe surfing and skateboarding certainly were. I cannot remember if sports climbing was new that for this year, but... They did so. Uh, it, they're all solid events. I think skateboarding is especially pretty fun. And just just like a Tony Hawk light, you could call it. N nothing crazy, but just enjoying the grinding and banking up the slopes, attempting to do tricks, that kind of stuff. Uh, the stuff that they do have in, it's, like I said, none of it's about, like, mash for, like, two minutes until your fingers go numb. And then they have the uh, the 1964 events, which actually were entirely that. It, it kind of does bring back the feeling of, oh, oh right, stadium events was a thing. And uh, I, I, I think one of the lasting memories of it was those, when they were more like events, they were incredibly fun, but they were also one of the last projects of Alpha Dream. Um, Alpha, I really enjoyed Alpha Dream's Mario and Luigi RPGs, and I, it's a cool thing for them to go out on, but at the same time, man, they're going to be a company that I'm, a developer that I miss. Uh, I really like those RPG games, even, even some of the lesser ones. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're getting close to the end of the night, and I would be remiss if I didn't highlight the fact that, yes, most of the Olympic Games attempted to stay true to their real-world counterparts, to, to whatever degree a video game, a game can do so. But Sega had a way to get around that. Um, for, most of the, for most of the Olympics entries they had things called dream events. And dream events were more akin to what you might expect from, like, a Nintendo fun times party game with items and special events and special powers and boosts and crazy fantasy worlds. And we've got two songs from those dream events. Uh, first off, we've got Dream Fencing from London 2012. Uh, fencing with a bit more in the way of powers and then dream shooting from tokyo 2020 which was just sort of this crazy arena shooter where you were trying to rack up uh points walking around this um i, I guess this like japanese garden just just looking for targets and tracking them down like not not quite a doom or something like that but just this weird sort of target shooting event so Let's take those in, and I'll see you on the other side.
we are approaching the end of the evening. And I want to give a big old thank you to everyone who stuck around through this, uh, through, the, through this technically weird <laughs> episode uh, of, of, of admittedly really good music, though. Uh, it's, it, it's been technically weird. We went out, we went out in the middle there. We came back. I'm looking at my overlay and it did not save some of my settings and I'm kind of annoyed with that, but you know, we did it. We made it. We're, we made it to the end and we have a whole weekend ahead of us. So I'm hoping you all enjoy your weekend and I am certainly hoping to get a lot of sleep. <laughs> And if you are so inclined, I hope you enjoy the last remaining bits of this year's Olympics. And uh, perhaps enjoy some Olympic games with that. Maybe uh, Sonic and Mar Mario and Sonic at Olympic Tokyo 2020 8-bit, whatever you want to call it. I am going to introduce our last song for the evening. And that last song is just going to be the main theme we started with an opening theme, we're going to end with an opening theme, but this opening theme is not the opening theme of the first Mario and Sonic games, which we did at the opening of this show. No, this is the opening of the latest Mario and Sonic game, uh, Tokyo 2020. So it's, it's, it's a good one. Again, I don't know what to say. It's a good song. I enjoy it. It's, it's, 2020 was a really good year for Mario and Sonic uh, games, and I, I don't know where it falls in relation to Rio. I think it has a bit more variety. I think the story really helps and makes it a bit more engaging, but, um, but we'll get to that sometime whenever I am ready to stream it. And with that, uh... Let's split for the evening. I hope you enjoy this main theme, and until next time, we're up, over, and gone. Peace, everyone. So, so, so hear me out on this pitch. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. 2024. It could be, it could even be a dream event. I'm fine with that. So you're one of many characters and you ride on a Yoshi and that Yoshi is riding on a horse and that horse is riding a bicycle and that bicycle is on a hoverboard that you are doing skateboard tricks on. Just, just best Olympic event. Tell me that's not the best Olympic event. <laughs>